I'm Anzoa Aya Clara. I stay in uh, Chile Chile West, North Town Council. I'm a pig farmer. At the same time, I also practice poultry. I had started rearing pigs. Uh, let me say this is my fifth year in this project. Initially, I was uh, doing some little business, a kind of gro grocery business in town. And uh, in that business, I realized I was not earning anything because the business ran for almost 12 years. And in that 12 years, when I began this project of the piggery, I began with only three piglets. And uh, since then, I've been rearing it, and uh, I've got to like it, because it is money fetching. And it's my really business right now. I felt I'm in love with it. So I also encourage others to go by what I'm doing because I feel it is paying. I also have some variety of breeds. I have land, land rays, I have Cambra, I have Large Quiet, and uh, the hemisphere I don't have. But I realize from what I do, the three breeds I have are actually better than those other ones. Though I might also need in future to also rear other breeds. But in the meantime, from what I see, what I'm doing right now, to me, it is much, much more better. Because when you take a look at the Cambra, Cambra uh, has less fat and it grows big and they're also very active. And when you take a look at the land rays, they are short and somehow big, but the Cambra is bigger. And uh, when you also cross it with Cambra, it becomes crosses and you realize it also doesn't have a lot of fat. Then uh, large quiet, when I also cross it with Cambra or land rays, it gives another breed and in the end, uh, it doesn't have too much fat. And when you, when you look at the environment, like I'm in Moyo, as I said earlier on, in Moyo normally the weather here changes anyhow. In most cases, you know, we, we have two seasons, but the hot one is really hot. So, since some of these pigs breeds I've mentioned have less fat, and I felt it is convenient to rear these particular breeds, because when it is really hot, some of them die of fat. You find them dead. But these other types I've mentioned don't die. They resist the excessive heat. So those are the few I felt I have the ground. Yes, there are so many types of pig sty. When you take a look at this one here, this is made out of uh, bricks, cement, and uh, it has a uh, concrete floor. And then there's another which is made out of timber or poles, but others normally cast the ground. They, they cast it with cement and others don't cast it. They leave it bare where they use sawdust. And it is what I'm using. I also use sawdust in this pig style. And it allies, to me, this is also better, though it is a little bit expensive, but it is okay. And uh, when you take a look at others from other places, you realize others don't even use the sawdust on the ground. And you realize it is very smelly. And where we are right now, the environment is good. Nothing is smelling. It's a work. The work you do it within no minute and it is done. So I realize it is much more better. 
In a, in a pig sty like this, in most cases, you need to separate. The young ones, age matters a lot. The male, the female, the ones which are castrated, they all have to be divided. When they are castrated, you can even keep 10 in a room. And the young ones, you can keep as many as you can in a room. But depending on uh, the ages, because when they're also very old, I mean others are big and others are smaller, you realize the big ones, they compete for feed a lot. So you realize the small ones always eat less and they lose a lot of weight. A pig might be big, I mean old, but also might be small. So in most cases, you need to sort it out. A small one, you have to keep them aside. The big ones, you have to put them aside. That way you realize they grow uniformly. And then also the boar. You need to select a very active boar. A boar must be very active in real sense. If you have a pig, let me say a boar, which is very dormant, it doesn't really fulfill the need. So a boar should be very active. And then the show, in most cases, we also put them in different rooms. Like what I have here, I have the ones which are pregnant. The mothers are all kept in, in each room. Because already, after they are furrowed, you cannot mix them together with the boar. So they have to be differently. Even the boar I have, they are kept different. I have two boars, but they are kept differently because they fight. They fight a lot when you put them together. Now, what makes it not smelly, I use the micro-indigenous organisms. That is the IMO in short. Some are sold in the outside market and some are made locally. We apply in each room every after two days. We sprinkle on the, on the sawdust. So that way, you don't even smell anything. I also enjoy the environment. In most cases, when you sprinkle these things, they eat up the feces. And when they eat it up, you know these microorganisms are live things. They end up eating the whole thing. And then, when you, when you okay, let me say, it heats up. There's always heat. It becomes very hot. It dries up the urine. It dries us up the feces. And you almost see no feces every day because it is a live thing. And it is sometimes, even the pigs themselves feed on the sawdust when there's nothing for them to eat. And you realize that the pig is all right, healthy looking. Because we use that indigenous microorganism sometimes, even for spraying the body, once in a while, they also drink. The water itself, we give them to drink once in a while. Yeah, this is the IMO, the indigenous microorganisms. You can see it as a label here, IMO. You can use it in several things. Pigs, chicken, goats, cows, many, many more. This is 250 grams. And uh, there is another one bigger than this. This is 500 grams. They're already packed. They're already made by someone and they're already packed. So for me, I realize it is much easier for, for me to buy and use. But others prefer to make using it. Because once it's bought at 10,000 shillings, this is sold at 10,000, the other bigger is 20,000. But when you have very few pigs, this can last for even one year depending on how you use it, how to use it. This is how it, it, it looks like. Because when it, it even, it smells sweet, the smell is very good. But when it overstays, the whole thing turns to black. Because how we also store it, low room temperature, cool environment, that's how it is supposed to be kept. So you realize when it has overstayed, you add in sugar, one teaspoonful, because they are live things, they feed on the sugar. Now, this is water, 10 liters jerry can. This is teaspoon. So I'm going to put two teaspoon in this. And then, 
you close it tightly. Then I add in bran. This is maize bran. So I'm going to add in the maize bran. Because they're going to feed on the maize bran. Then it is stirred. Stirred completely. It should really be stirred because if you don't stir it, it doesn't work well. So this is done. And I'm going to keep this the whole of tomorrow. And tomorrow I still stare the same way I've stared. Then, tomorrow next is when I can apply on this sawdust. But I'll not apply the whole thing. I pour and leave in two liters. I'm going to add in fresh water in here. Then add maize bread. I'm not adding the IMO again for one month. So every after two days, I pour and leave some two liters down. Then I add in fresh water and add in maize bran. Just that, every after two days. That's what I do. Then after one month, then I pour the whole thing away. You know where I pour it? I don't pour it anyhow. I pour it in a, in a pit. There's a, there's a pit for the manure. So it helps the manure to decompose so quickly. So I pour it in a pit, not in a house. My name's Geraldine Seriange, and we are on Semlana farm in Jita. This is how we start laying the bed for IMO um, system of rearing pigs. It is supposed to be three feet from here, it's a depth of three feet. So the first thing we layer inside is the logs. You have logs in here, and then on top we shall put the branches. Okay, these logs are part of the are part of the bed of making the bed. Oh. So you, you should build different logs of this, of this nature. You can, it is interesting, it is of use if you put log around the, the trough so that because the litter goes down, but you have to put logs all around here. Then on top we put the branches. You can add a little more logs. These are not enough, but you can add a little more logs. Then you layer it with branches with leaves. Once you have put the logs and the branches on top, you, you apply this, the mixture of sawdust. Sawdust is mixed with uh, five liters, uh, five kilos of salt, five of lime, five of red soil, and then it's all mixed, mixed up, okay? Then after doing that, you, sp you put it on top, layer it on top, and then you spray it with IMO, okay, the mixture of IMO. You can use a watering can to do that, and you wet it, but don't, it shouldn't drip. It's like when you take, uh, when you take uh, a handful of, of the sawdust and you squeeze it. It should not be dropping water. So it is just moist. You create a, a moist environment for the pigs because then they can roll in it. It's, it's cool, but it's not wet. It is just cool. So these are the ingredients we are going to, to, to mix with the pig feed. We start we start with the maize bran. This is maize bran. You pour it there. It's about 58 kilos. So in 58 kilos of maize bran, we put cotton seed cake, 8 kgs, put cotton cake. The cotton seed cake is 8 kilos, putting it in. Yes? It. 
good. And then adding fish, eight kilos as well. Then put in shell. In shell, that is four kilos. Then we put in three mix. 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So put half of that. And then salt, this is salt, the brown salt. Don't have to put any salt, no. We are putting salt. Brown one. Meant for the animals. It is one kilo. When you add in salt, of course it is minerals. But the body needs it. So they need to eat it also, they also need it. And when you add in salt, then we add in vipro to add weight. And this is complete meal. For a piglet or for a, for a pig, which has lost a lot of weight, when you make this concentrate, just give it a week. You see a pig really putting weight. This is one type. Then there's another, we also do it out of sweet potatoes. It's the wrong time. Otherwise, we also mix out of potatoes. We put in all these ingredients, not to cheapen the cost. In pig feed formulation, you should at least make sure you minimize the cost. We don't give them this every day. We give them twice or thrice a week. Then some of the days, we give them other substitutes. Because if you put them on, on this entirely, it becomes expensive. We are going to feed the pigs with, the one in the bucket. And then this, this particular one here, the one which will be left, we shall fill in a, in a, in a sack and then keep it in the cold, dry place. This is how I, I normally stock the maize bran because the number of animals I have are many, both chicken and uh, pigs. So I need to stock this much. This is maize bran. And then this is fish. This fish is already sieved. This is the rough one. It needs to be sorted, then uh, grinded to become soft like this one. This is the one which is already soft, ready for mixing. I have the shell here. This is the shell, is what I'm left with. I need to add more for the mixture. And then this is cotton seed cake. This is what normally I use. One of the mixtures. And then here, in this packet, there are variety of things. The salt, the vitro, the pre-made, several others. And then this big thing you see here, this is the shield. I use this as big as it is, but I use this for shiving the fish. Because the fish which we buy is not sieved. So we buy the one which is still in, you know, in some state. So we buy, we shiv using this shiver. Yes. And then this small thing here, you've seen here, this one here. This container is for somebody. Somebody wants to buy a, a piglet with it. So this evening, he's coming to collect piglets in this thing here. That's why it is kept in this store. Here is an example of the, the vegetables we feed these pigs. These are leaves from, from the yams. Then we have others which are cassava. And in, in, in very dry seasons, we can use even the banana leaves. The, this one is an example of a sweet potato vine. What we do, we dip these in a salt salt water. We mix salt in water and then we dip them in there. All we use soap. We can use omo. We dip the, the vegetables in soapy or salted water to kill the germs. Because what happens in a village like this, if for example there is a swine fever in the area, the dogs on the, in the village, they move around and they can, you know, uh, urinate on them or defecate on them. So when you use the soapy or the salt, you kill the germs. So you, you don't have disease on your farm, okay? So after that, we chop them. 
times when it is very hot and the, you don't have enough you can use the banana leaves you can remove them like this or chop but these ones they they like the leaves then we can add the jackfruit in the mixture huh? it should be biteable sizes you chop into biteable sizes there the pig does not waste the food and when we are feeding the pigs we put all this in the in the troughs we don't put just throw them inside anyhow so we mix everything together When it comes to management, it's not a difficult thing, it's a very easy thing because I involve every family member to do it for me. We work together hand in hand. So when it means management, every morning we feed them according to their ages. Like a big grown pig, we give them three kilos of their feed on a daily basis. And uh, let me say, halfway grown, we give them two kilos on a daily basis. Then the young ones, after weaning them, we give them one kilo on a daily basis. And what we normally do, we feed them once in the morning. And in the evenings, when we feel like, we give them any other thing. Greens, actually, that's what we normally give them. But you realize, they don't complain. They are all right because they feed once in a day. Actually, others give them twice or three times in a day. But it work, works hectic. But when you give them once, they are comfortable with it. They are used to it. So they know they are, they are fed once. And then in the evening, they eat something light. So you realize it becomes very easy to feed them. The feeding trough they feed from. On a daily basis, we have to clean it before giving new feed. Of course, others locally, you know, they, they cut a jerk can and then they put water in it or in a, in a basin. For me, I don't recommend because you realize they either pour it off or they break the bucket or the jerk can. So you realize it keeps the room always wet. So it is convenient to put something like, like, like this on the ground, you pour in water, you change. On a daily basis, you have to wash where the water is kept. Because if you don't wash it, they don't drink the water you pour in. How much as others say, you know, pigs are dirty animals. Well, it's not true, they're not dirty. Because what they eat from is always clean. Because if they eat from a dirty plate, in most cases, they don't eat. Deworming, I deworm them in most cases, let me say twice after three months or sometimes once because they don't move anyhow. They are confined. So I believe in most cases I deworm them twice every three months. Then spraying, I spray them regularly on a weekly basis because they are confined and they develop those lice so easily compared to the ones that move anyhow. Those ones, you know, even if you don't really spray them, they can stay for like six months without any lice on them. But these ones here, they are very sensitive there. So I have to spray them really on a weekly basis to keep them clean. That's what I normally do. And then also when you win the young ones from the mother, what we normally do, we first of all put them, we inject them with multivitamins so that they retain that appetite. Because if you first win them from the mother and then you put them on their feet, you realize they begin losing weight because they are used to breastfeeding. So what, what we, we, we normally do is we just put them on vitamins. Then we also inject them in the skin. 
that is, you know, there's some, uh, some infection normally. They also develop on the skin because it makes this whatever peels off, the hairy part peels off. So in most cases, we inject them. That one applies to all, all of them. We really inject them. Then also, we also give them antibiotics, the young ones, because in most cases, there is no vaccines given for pigs. Even if it's, not, it's there, but I've never heard of in, in these five years. Take a look at swine fever. Swine fever, I think, we only control it. Because once it hits the animals, the solution is to die. That is all. So the best we can do is you, you keep the pigs in confinement. The pigs have to be confined. You feed them from the same room, like the one I am doing. We don't bring outside feeds for them to eat. That's why I choose to mix the feeds within. That way they don't get the swine fever. That's why I've not suffered swine fever since I began rearing my animals in this kind of units. But you realize almost every year there's breakout of swine, swine fever. Every corner pigs died for lose interest. But for me I have never lost interest because I've never lost them in that kind of disease. What is behind me here, next here, is the boar I have. But when you look at the selection, when you want to choose a really good bear, I mean boar, there are things you should consider. Out of very many piglets, you realize there are others with very small testicles, very small. So you need to choose the one which is really big because they all can't be at the same size. So you choose the one with very big testicles and strong one. That is one. And then when you're choosing the saw, in most cases, you count the breasts, the nipples, the nipples. The one with less nipples is the one that gives you less piglets. And as a farmer, a farmer needs huh, many, many more. So when you choose the one with 10 nipples, it gives you 10. When you choose the one with 16, it gives you 16. Like there is one land, uh, I mean large quite I, I have here. It used to give me 18, 18 piglets. And that is my breeder. It produced for almost 10 times. And it is still producing. So when you look at that, you need to, to choose those things accordingly. And then two, how to identify a saw which is, which is on heat. That one is very important because in most cases, even other farmers complain, you know, this uh, pig of mine does not want to produce, you know. But the truth is one, you look at the cervix, the swelling, there's always a very big swelling. So when you see that sign of the swelling, meaning the pig is on heat, you remove it from where, where it is, you bring it to the, to the room which is confined for the boar. This is the boar's pen. And we notice one of the pigs was on heat this yesterday. We brought her in here to see that the boar will mount the, the saw. The saw will come on heat the minute you remove piglets uh, or litter from the saw, it will become on the heat the first seven days to show signs of, of getting on heat. And if you don't give it a male, it, the, the, of course it will disappear and then come again. It will reoccur, reoccur every two or every four days, four days or seven days. So. The person who's working in the, in the piggery should be very observant because each time uh, a saw gets on heat and it's not served a male or a boar, it means the farm is making a loss. And, and also when you keep the boar and the saw in the same room for quite a long time, they will never mate because they look at each other like sister and brother. 
So they don't do it. So you realize farmers begin to complain, yeah, these things are staying, they are eating well, they are fat. Huh? But the truth is, you need to keep them separately so that they, be, they develop feelings. And when they develop it, and when the time comes, very fast, they just mate. There you are. And after mating, you look at, you first of all begin counting. You begin counting from the second day. Like if it has mated now, or some few hours ago. You begin the counting tomorrow. Because in most cases, the whole process, the like whole period is three months, three weeks, and three days. So if you count well, or if you didn't count well, you realize you either counted less by one day or two days. So right now when a pigs, I mean when you see a pig mounting, for me, I can tell when my animal is going to produce. Then I get prepared for it. And also for a female one, for it to get on, on heat in most cases, depending on you, the farmer. You don't feed it well, it will never have feelings. Never. So feeding matters a lot. When you feed them well, they always also develop interest. You realize they're always on heat. They produce just that. And when they produce the young ones, Managing it is a very big, difficult thing for farmers. So I manage it locally. When they produce, I don't keep the mother with the young one in the night because they sleep on it. It can even kill two in one night. And that is a lot of money. Because per piglet or 50 days, we win them at 50 days. So a piglet of 50 days costs 100,000 Ugandan shillings. So what we do, in most cases, every night, we remove the small ones. Every night, you take it away, you keep it in another room. Then you, you bring them to, to the mother in the morning. But you keep within, you keep monitoring, you keep checking. Not that after feeding, you leave them there, you go away. No. You stay with them. Sometimes you come, you check on them, you go away. Just like that, you keep checking on them. Up to two of two weeks. Because when they're two weeks, they become very strong. The mother cannot rest on it. If it does, it, it makes noise, then you'll know. So at least the duration of two weeks is when we keep them together and keep checking. People tend to, to choose the big ones and they leave you the small ones. And those, big, those small ones, when they leave, we castrate them, we grow them. So when we grow them, People come and buy at another price. So right now, there are some which are castrated in a, another room, but I also sell accordingly because there are some that go for 500,000 Ugandan shillings. There are some that goes for 500, some for 300, depending on its size. And we really keep selling each time we, we sell. So I make good money out of it. And also out of the manure from the sawdust, you know. Patrick's, Patrick goes for 80,000 Ugandan shillings. Nzo gamba, nti nyame ni singa, tambulo singe yente. Nzo nga, abantu banji wa jetani la nyato kusinge yente. Nyame ni diwa mitendele jenja ulo. Aluo abatale mbisi, and you see, Nancy. Ah, while our gantins and Jacob from Bida, over losing a tiny wood day, Gamba can to Alembis from Bida Waka. Twina a yoke seeker. A lion of guns and Jagalan seeker with our neck cabbage. And you have to wish she could take up on your mogu. I told about what our Gala support. Above Galanya Mankalu, must have a question in my Joche. A Kulagila Pat Jagalas, in most cases, but a lot of ambidies. Steman to Zuma, to demanding a tinger, and to take a comodo. Chigitra the Twitter special, the Twakazaka special. Tiny Shibodo, the two attack, 
Ebera ya gumu lukumi bitano. Ba customer bina wababa wanyi mukama wanyi. Oini oini zokuwe sanga customer na kuvia na gamba ndi guru. Temela yao kido sato nisanga ngazidi. Ena kuyenkulo kusinga. Singo tunje nyama kwa ba ba nsulo tunda nyama tani kila kilo ngavi viti kuda wangu. Songa tume na kuzine no. Dera mukilo ngavi chukumi chukumi atano wengine. Nampere Angela is my name. We work at Rosa Butchery. We deal in uh, butchery products, including pork. Pork has a large market in Uganda. People like it a lot. Here at Rosa Butchery, we process. We have pork chops. We have spare ribs. Um, we have uh, the neck part. We chop neck part. We have gammon. We have uh, sausages, barbecue sausages. We have ham, bacon, and a lot of stuff. People like it a lot. And the souls are good. But when I started, I was almost earning nothing. But it must not discourage farmers. All a starting point is something very difficult. You need to be tolerant, you need to bear a lot of it. So, the level where I've reached in five years, last year, my Neat income, let me say, gross. I made about 10.3. People come from Juba, they collect and they give you your money. Even from within, people come and buy. From within, people prefer to buy the young ones because they want to grow it. They take it and then they grow it up. But across, if you cross here, they buy the big ones just for flesh. People even come from Gulu, they come to buy. So I realize it is much more better and I, I believe this year I'll make more money than last year. Because this time I think I, I have more souls than I, I used to have. I have now, let me say, about six of them. So these six, when, when they give me average, Ten piglets per each. I know others will give me 12, 14, 16, but all the same, when I took a look at, when, when I said 12, okay, 12 in average. That is good money. And if it's not bought, I also take to my farm. I have another farm somewhere. I take it too, because the sale of these pigs has really given me money. It made me bought some piece of land. I'd also put in some big style. So it is quite big from the money I got from this. So I'm advising the youth out there, the other farmers who are also willing to practice it because very many tend to discourage a lot from this kind of thing. They don't know that when you really practice it, it well, it earns a living. And I am what I am today because of this. And I really wanted to put it into practice and do it as more as I can, even the bits which I don't have, I need to bring in and try and see how best they will do.